right, so we're going to be setting up an A1 portrait page. This is usually the kind of page I like to do for my portfolio. And we're going to be dropping in the PDF embed of our map. Usually this we can get from an ordinance survey like Digimap. Make sure that you click on embed so that you can access all the details and lines and shapes. I'm then going to use the white mouse to click and select these individual lines that we don't need. Start deleting them. Sometimes you might find there's an overlap, so make sure to look out for this. Essentially, we want to get rid of all the text, um, extra line weights and random objects that are within this page. Now, this might seem like a tedious process. So a way to speed things up is to go to select, same and stroke weight, stroke color, that kind of thing. Usually selects all the similar items. For now, I'm just going to move this onto another layer to hide it, but you can also delete this. Basically, we want to keep the map really minimal and simple. So all this extra information isn't really needed. And sometimes there's a lot of hidden information as well. So make sure you're kind of highlighting across and deleting this as you go. Once you get the hang of this, it's really easy to do. And as you can see, the map has sort of expanded out. Now we're going to select a site. So this one, um, let's go for this one. I'm going to select it and fill it just so we know where our site is. And essentially we want to create a radius around this site. So I'm going to select the circle tool, add in a circle, make sure it's in the middle. And this forms the basis of our sun path. Then I'm going to just give it a heavy stroke so we can see that clearly. Highlight the whole thing. And then start deleting, you know, chunks that we don't need. This basically keeps your file really um, simple and small. Now we can go ahead and make sure we're getting rid of those pesky lines. And then we're going to highlight everything, right click and select make clipping mask. And immediately that looks so much more neater and clearer. Now, as you can see, there are a few red lines that I'm going to highlight and change over to black. I want this to be completely um, cohesive together. So I'm also going to be adjusting the line weights. Again, you can do this using the select same tool, whether that's line weight or appearance usually works well. It might take some trial and error to do this, but once you get the hang of it and once it's done, it's really easy to work with. I've also noticed a few odd little shapes. Um, so I'm just gonna get rid of this by using the select same stroke color. Now I wanna start coloring around the site. This is just so we can add some color um, and sort of differentiate between the roads and the buildings itself. I'm going to use a very minimal colour palette, but you can use whatever um, you already have in your portfolio. So one thing you might notice, we've already made this a clipping mask. So when we go to live paint, it won't really let us select that option. So actually we're going to need to release the clipping mask temporarily. And then I usually like to add a stroke onto the circle just so we can um, differentiate and know where we're, we're colouring in. So go ahead and make it a live paint object. Now if you can't see the live paint tool, you might want to click on the three dots on the left hand side toolbar and drag those in. I'm going to be using the live paint bucket tool in particular. I'm going to select my colour. So I'm going for a very light grey to do these sort of outside of the buildings. You don't necessarily have to colour in all of the buildings either. It's a very sort of artistic and creative process. And remember that you can also control Z to undo anything. You could also paint over with white if you accidentally painted in anything wrong. I usually don't tend to um, life paint any of the roads just to keep it very simple. You could also do the same method in Photoshop, but it won't really give you the same line position or filtering options as Illustrator does. 
and I feel like once you get the hang of life paint it just makes it so much easier to do just a disclaimer this is obviously sped up so it did take me a while to do this but like I said before you don't necessarily need to fill in all of the buildings just ones that you can identify now the closer I get to the building the darker my grey is gonna get and that just gives a bit of interest um, you could also figure out um, the distances from your site to these buildings and base it on that add in a key so for example all the light great buildings are actually sort of um, a mile or two miles away from the site something like that you could also use color to identify certain landmarks or buildings of note and then again add in a key at the bottom of the page you could also actually use in a gradient or fill or kind of pattern if you wanted to hatch the buildings inset instead now I know that a couple of these areas are actually um, parks or something so I might use a different colour to differentiate between the landscape and the actual buildings themselves. Like I said before you could also do this in a 3D version so if that's something that you want to see a tutorial on in video format like this video and leave a comment below. Again, like I said before, you can always use Ctrl Z or the white colour to fill in any mistakes. This just gives it a very clean look overall, and even if you do miss a few buildings, it's not the end of the world. Essentially, we, we want to highlight the sun path diagram over all these buildings. So now I actually realise that I might want to change this purple into... A different color instead of um, selecting all of the purple elements I'm going to actually go to live paint release and then again use the select same feature to select the color and turn it into a sort of darker green then I'm just going to fill in the site so it's a bit more prominent and that looks good for the time being so we're going to turn on our clipping mask again I'm just going to turn all the light line weights um, and line colour to a white just to give it a very minimal look. Make sure to do this for all the buildings if you're thinking of doing this. So now we have a really clean and simple diagram. Now I'm going to go to suncalc.org and get a really um, rough idea of the sun path around my site you can enter in the address and postcode and i'm going to drop this into our illustrator just so we can have a point of reference essentially make sure that the map is in the middle for this next step to work which is adding in a few circles around the diagram to highlight points of interest or times of the day i'm going to add in one in the middle and one directly above that just make it really bigger too for you to see then i'm going to use the rotate tool now what this does is um, add in points around the circle and it's really easy to use you just have to click in the center of the circle before if that makes sense 
and you're going to want to calculate um, the angle you want to be rotated at so that depends on how many points you want to include so I'm going for a 60 de degree angle and just adding in all those points now again this can be completely customized um, to your liking you know whether you want to have circles or arrows or um, whether you want to change up the color and things like that I usually kind of leave this to the end um, but again, if you have a theme set up in your portfolio, this can be the great time to um, use that color palette. So I'm going to continue adding in some of these different points. Um, it's really important that you keep zooming in and out to understand the scale of things. Obviously, this is going to be on an A1 page, but if you're presenting in a digital format, um, it's really important that you can really see stuff. You could also edit this earlier on and make the um, radius around the site much smaller and then make your diagram a bit bigger but i think this is okay for now so now we've got all our points i'm just going to adjust the top two circles slightly to match our sun path reference and then make all of the circles slightly bigger so we can see them better and essentially we want two points for our sunrise and sunset and then one kind of um, focal point and that can be any time of the day usually like noon or evening time and then i'm just going to go ahead and also change the color of these circles so um, i'm going to go for an orange yellow and maybe actually blue And this is just again to indicate the difference in these um, points of interest and next i'm going to add in a few lines that go out from our site to these points similar to the sun calc diagram you might also want to add in another layer for this so that you don't accidentally select the shapes on the map So I'm going to add in these lines connecting to the site, thicken them up a little bit, and then we can adjust the line weight um, type and that kind of thing later on as well. Next one I'm going to be adding in a gradient from the middle point, so I'm just going to draw in a shape with a pen tool, and then click on the gradient tool fill it in, click on the gradient tool um, and apply the gradient itself so you can actually colour pick um, each of the, the points so I'm just going to keep it as this orange and make the white a transparent colour and then you kind of have to direct the gradient and as you can see this is upside down but it's fine because we can actually just swap over the colours and it gives us the same effect so then you can sort of adjust this to your liking. Now it's really just a matter of um, fine tuning all the details and things like that, annotating. Um, and actually for this, I'm just going to add in the site on top again, so it's a little bit neater. Of course, you can do this however you want but I'm just going to add in a dashed line to sort of outline the site and make it stand out a bit more against the other buildings. Next I'm going to add in a sort of area similar to the sun calc diagram that shows the sunlight um, across all of the buildings itself. So again, um, creating a circle, duplicating that above to create that crescent shape and then using the shape builder tool and holding alt to delete the extra shapes that we don't really need. Then I'm going to be lowering the opacity on this and adjusting it again. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. Um, you can also customize this however you like, add in tags, labels, annotate it. I would say, you know, utilize your layers and, um, keep your file sort of organized if you have a portfolio template on InDesign you can easily drag in this diagram 
um, as a PDF or an illustrator file directly in. And that's pretty much it. So I hope that you liked this tutorial. Leave me a comment below if there's anything else you would like to see. And uh, yeah, this is the final result. So again, you can customize this however you want. If you want to add any annotation on InDesign, then that's totally fine too. Um, I usually add in points of interest, again, highlighting the sunset, the um, sunrise and time of day. You could also add in a key at the bottom and that's pretty much it. So make sure you like this video. It's our first tutorial on this channel and let me know if you want to see the 3D version of this. Um, I can totally create that for you guys. So I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.